best places to buy foreclosures, more power over banks, some mortgage brokers follow the money. Next on renewsyoucanuse.com. Welcome to realestatenewsyoucanuse.com. I'm Ruben Austria. Hello, Ruben Austria. I'm Keith Carberry. Keith Carberry. Live. Um, not live. Li- not live. No, we're not doing live anymore. Live to tape. <laughs> How you been? Unedited. What's going on? <laughs> uh, not too much. Not too much, Ruben. What's going on with you? Not too much. Not too much. Just keep them busy, obviously. Thank goodness. Yeah, you. The improvements that uh, we've made over on our website are, are taking uh, fold. Uh, we've made some changes on the front page of our website. If you go to the very top right-hand side, you'll see next to our names at the very top right-hand side, you'll see a button that says Top Recommendations. We highly, highly suggest that you check that out. Uh, these top recommendations have been uh, certified and pre-approved by Ruben and I, and uh, we take uh, heart in these suggestions, and we use uh, the material that is on the Top Recommendations page. Exactly. Uh, one quick change also we actually place the articles back on the bottom of the video rather than to uh the left of uh, well the to the right. right to the right yeah so uh if this is the first time visiting our e-news you can use dot com real estate news you can use is a podcast and vodcast about real estate and mortgage industry news uh we take basically take three articles uh what we think is really relevant information <laughs> that you can use <laughs> Whether you're a consumer or home buyer, um, home seller or whatever, a real estate professional and uh, you know, apply it to uh, your, ex- your own experience. Yeah, that's what we do. That's what we do. So are you ready to uh, go ahead with the Let's news? get it on. Let's get it on. All right. Well, first article is from Forbes uh, magazine online. Best places to buy foreclosed homes. Yeah, and, I like uh, this. Keith, we all know that buyer's market especially because of the foreclosure uh, foreclosure crisis if mm-hmm. you will mm-hmm. uh, that everyone obviously knows about um, mm-hmm. but this is a great article because it, it, it basically for everyone who's an investor or, uh, who, or maybe a first time home buyer wants to know where, where they want to buy a house or when they want right. to buy a house depending on right. what the markets are top five markets to best uh, best uh, for, buy foreclosed home are Charlotte North Carolina Raleigh North Carolina, Oklahoma City, San Antonio, Albuquerque, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Any surprise here, Keith? Uh, I am surprised a little bit. Uh, you see the uh, Oklahoma City, you wouldn't even think about moving there because we're on the East Coast. And if you live on the East Coast, you don't think anybody lives any further west. Now, where is that, right? <laughs> is there a, is, can you show that on the map? Uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, same kind of thing. Uh, I I think the reason being is that uh, you know these towns did not have as much ups as we did, and you know they tend to not have many as many highs or lows. Right. So there's more stability in those towns than there are in the East Coast or West Coast. Well, right. And these 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 cities also have um, economies that are not further burdened by economic. Uh, you know, poor economic situations such as right. Detroit. Detroit, exactly. I mean, you can get a really cheap home in Detroit, but will you? What would you want to invest in that city? I Sorry, think, Detroit. I think not. You know, I really, I really. In fact, they have the Detroit has the highest amount of foreclosures. It's, was it four point nine percent or something like that? Right, four point nine percent. So five percent of all the houses there have been foreclosed. That's that's pretty high. That's that pretty means shocking. five out of every one hundred. Just in case you didn't notice that. <laughs> I mean, really. I, you know, you look at 100 houses and, you know, five of them have uh, been foreclosed on. And there's probably Reuben Pockets in Detroit where the whole street has been foreclosed and it's, it's mayhem. Mayhem. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it is kind of it is kind of crazy. It's and, ridiculous. And I feel bad because it's not just it's, they're not just foreclosed upon because of because uh, uh, the mortgage industry uh, problems. They're foreclosed upon because uh, the economic stress that's been going on in Detroit where right. the, the auto builders and, and all the all the. Uh, all the different, uh, I'm trying to say, mechanics and machinery things that used to be there are no longer. Lo- loss of jobs. Loss of jobs. So th- that's that's not good. Not that's, a, not a good, not good not a good place to live right now. And I'm I feel bad for you guys. Check out the uh, full article at rnewsyoucanuse.com. 
Next article comes from msnbc.com. Lawmaker pushes for more power over banks. Representative Barney Frank from Massachusetts. Yep. Wants tougher regulation standards after Bear Stearns collapse. Uh, you know what drives me crazy about this article is that it's um, it, it makes it sound like something good, and I don't know if it necessarily is good, Ruben. They're, it's saying lawmakers pushes for more power over banks. Basically what they're doing is they're, they're saying the government wants more legislation more le- legislation over the banks. Well, that may or may not be good. Uh, obviously, there was a little bit of lax of legislation going right. on before, but it really wasn't that. Uh, both the Democratic parties and the Republican parties were just throwing money into the system after 9-11, and it just kept on coming. The money kept on coming, so it was very easy for the banks to lend out more money and lend out more money. And was that a, a bank fault? Was that a Bear, St- Bear Stearns fault? I don't think so. Uh, so I think uh, you know Bonnie, Barney Frank is an extremely liberal uh, Democrat, and he wants to uh, put more power to uh, the government and take less power away from the people, meaning the banks as well. And I, I, I don't, I don't know if I necessarily believe that. I believe in free trade, and I think that that could actually cause a problem going forward if we don't have that free trade that we have today. Exactly. I mean, I. I it, it, says, it says they want to shift the power from one uh, from the Treasury Department, the Fed, the Securities and Exchange Commission yeah, into just, just basically just one one entity. Right, one big making bucket. all the decisions. Right, one big bucket. You know that that's fine when you're talking about the security of uh, the country, where the FBI and the CIA and uh, what's the other one? There's three there's three entities where they where they've now consolidated with the, the security. But when it comes when it comes to financial information, I don't know if that's I don't I, I'm just not a big fan of that. It's getting too much too much into the free market. When, when you when you take away from the free market, you take away from what uh, made the U.S. the U.S. of A. Exactly. I don't know. I mean, well, I don't know. So that's what, I, I'm not being politically. I'm just being I'm just right. being honest with my free trade beliefs. Right. Well, laissez faire. Definitely. Hands, you know what laissez faire is, right? Yes. The hands off, and I think that's right, where we should be. Laissez faire. That's what we were the, uh, 200 years let's ago. Just, let the chips fall where they may. That's right. I dropped a bag of chips the other day, and I said that to um, uh, my, my son, and he's like, Man, Dad, you get the weird, the corniest dad ever. <laughs> 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 so I looked up corniestdadever.com, and I uh, purchased it. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's the, next, that's the next podcast coming up. That's right. Check out the full article at renewsyoucanuse.com. If you agree with us, great. If you don't agree with us, fine. Go, you know, go, go and you know, and I hate to, opinion. I hate to push this, Ruben. I'm going to push it one more time. Check out top recommendations. I highly recommend it because I think you're going to find something that you like. We're using uh, these products, or we have used these products, so you need to check out uh, top recommendations. So press the button on RENews You can use top right hand corner. Exactly. Our next article comes from realestatejournal.com. Mortgage brokers take jobs advising anxious borrowers. Um, well, basically, I mean, I'm surprised I haven't seen an article like this uh, before because there, there's so many mortgage brokers that have lost their jobs. I know, I know. Due to, uh, due to the, uh, I guess, the uh, whole shrinkage of the market. And, right. Um, what did, what did they say, Ruben? It's basically, from- basically, what's happening is like all the mortgage brokers that you, who used to uh, who used to be making six figure incomes are now constantly, constantly brought, you know borrowers to try to help help them avert mortgages. Making uh, forty thousand dollars a year or less. Foreclosures. Yeah, and the foreclosures. Right. right. Yeah, right. I, I mean, I, I like this article. It's kind of interesting and. Uh, and at the beginning of the show, I said uh, that uh, the some mortgage brokers are. Uh, Heading towards uh, a moving where the where the money is, and that's where the money is. One hundred eighty million dollars have been moved into this industry, and uh, that's what the mortgage brokers are doing. They're finding in, they're, they're moving with the markets to where they're, they're going where, they, where the money is. Yeah, going with the money. Follow the money. No, I mean, uh, not a lot of uh, we don't have much time left, but not a lot of uh, people, even in this organization, believe it's a good idea for the people who. I guess mm-hmm. maybe got people into trouble, helping people get out, right, helping right, them get out. Right. I mean, but again, it's not the pe- yeah, yeah, not everybody. Right. Was yeah, you can't blame everybody, right? Every, yeah. Anyways, um, check out the news for yourself. Renewsyoucanuse dot com. Yeah. See the full articles. Giddy um, up. Until next time, I'm Ruben. I'm Keith. Make it a great day. Bye bye.